Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and today we're talking about Victorian memes. And I don't mean memes from the Victorian era and I don't mean this kind of a meme about the Victorian era. I'm talking about an academic paper with the title Victorian Memes by Karen Bourrier from the Papers and Responses from the 13th Annual Conference of the North American Victorian Studies Association. And yes, I am reading this off my notebook. This uh, was published in the winter of 2016. I will put a link to the full paper in the description box. This links to the article on JSTOR. So I'm not sure if you'll have access to that. I do believe though that JSTOR has opened up their full database for non-university members up until the end of this year. But don't quote me on that. Click the link and see if you can read it for free. This article draws connections between the internet meme, at least as it was understood in 2016, and the Victorian realist novel. It argues that, and I quote, sentimental Victorian realist fiction, which often features didactic narrators with distinct moral worldviews, offers particularly fertile ground for memes, as aphoristic phrases are easily extracted and given new life as tweets. So, what the author is saying is that the Victorian novel, by its very nature, is particularly suited to then be repurposed as a tweet in the 21st century. She then goes on to kind of trace a history between the Victorian novel and modern day Twitter memes. She touches on the proliferation of many of these quotes from Victorian novels uh, in newspapers of the 19th century and then phrase books, merchandise, postcards in the 20th century through to social media in the 21st century. So she argues that there has really been a continuous line of this repurposing of quotes from Victorian novels throughout the centuries. In order to analyse Victorian memes on Twitter, the author has picked four Victorian authors and has tracked the mentions of them on Twitter over the course of six months. Those authors are Charles Dickens, George Eliot, Anthony Trollope and Dina Craig. So for six months, Karen Borea collected these tweets about these four authors, or that mentioned these four authors, and then she randomized them and picked out a smaller selection of those tweets because she couldn't analyze hundreds of thousands of tweets, obviously. And then she looked at the tweets that she picked out and tried to figure out what they are about. And this is what she found that a large part of the tweets were about. I quote, In the meme pool of Victorian tweets, the worthiness of love and friendship, the best ways to deal with failure and success, and the folly of gossip and judgment are the most enduring cultural values. She also notes that the language of Twitter, and I should point out here that this was pre-280 character limit, so this was while Twitter was still operating a 140 character limit. The language of Twitter adds to the condensation of these quotes from the novels. So in order to tweet some of these long sentences, people had to shorten and condense them, thereby making them sound weirdly even more Victorian. So the author argues that Twitter, by its very limitations, makes these quotes sound even more Victorian than the originals. So what were people tweeting about? She found tweets about reading progress. I'm sure we've all tweeted something about where we are at in a particular book. Quotes from these authors' books. Uh, there were tweets about selling certain books. There were tweets that were about news for uh, book adaptations on television. She notes that very few of these tweets were academic in nature. Most of them were non-academic. Most of them were just everyday readers like you and me tweeting about what we're reading. But the most popular tweet or type of tweet that she identified can be understood as a sort of heartwarming or inspirational quote. She uh, lists this example, a quote again, a popular tweet attributed to Dina Craig exhorts the reader, quote, be loving and you will never want for love, be humble and you will never want for guiding. Now this is slightly misquoted from the original source um, and it is misquoted to kind of make it more general, more like an inspirational quote rather than just 
a sentence from a book. So these quotes are taken out of context. For example, many of them will, in the original novel or in the original book, be part of character dialogue or internal monologue, or they will be attributed to a character specifically rather than just a vague saying that the author throws into the world. But in order to function as tweets, these quotes are then made more general, more like a general piece of advice. And Karen Boria even found a, a kind of a formula. So she notes that the most popular and successful of these tweets, the ones that got retweeted the most, uh, can be understood as heartwarming or inspirational and uh, about love or friendship and start with a kind of generic term. So I tried it out, obviously. I saw the formula and I thought, hey, let's see if this still works in 2020. So a couple of days ago, I tweeted this quote by Oscar Wilde. Let me find it on my Twitter account and obviously I'll blend it in up here as well. Laughter is not at all a bad beginning for a friendship and it is by far the best ending for one. This is a quote from the picture of Dorian Gray and it is in fact said by the character of Lord Henry Wotton. That obviously doesn't make it into the tweet so I just put it in quotation marks and then put Oscar Wilde at the end of it. And as you can see, people didn't really care about that. Obviously, this is only one example, and I think people must have been a little bit weirded out by me tweeting that because it's not my usual tweeting style. Normally on Twitter, I only have two settings. One is angry about politics, and the second one is cat pictures. So tweeting that was definitely a little bit out of character for me, and maybe that's why people didn't pick up on it that much. So as you can see there, it only got two likes and no retweets. But anyway, this was a little discussion about this really fantastic paper. I implore you to go check it out and hopefully you have access to it and you can read the full thing. It is a fascinating piece of research, pre-Victober. Um, social media, I think, has changed a lot in the last five years. And I think the way that we talk about Victorian fiction on social media has changed a lot as well. Because now what we understand as memes is not just simple quotes, but obviously there is this layer of humor added to it. There's this layer of relatability added to the Victorian meme. So we've gone from a simple quote from a book that might be seen as inspirational in some way to really something that makes fun of literature in a way that we can all kind of relate to. That was it for a little exploration of the academic study of Victorian memes. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. Bye!